So, Kurt and I had a really ordinary question of where shall we live after we get married? He owned a condo, I owned a condo, and I ended up moving in with him. But you know what? As nice as his place was, it wasn't my own space and I was unhappy. And he would have been unhappy if he moved in with me. So the solution really was to co-create a space together. And this journey of looking for a space together really morphed into building a green, sustainable home. There's technology here and now that we can control ourselves as owners and, and make an extraordinarily efficient uh, home relative to the benchmark of the past. And that's exactly what Passive House does. It takes the traditional load of a building and reduces it by 80 or 90 percent. We combine all those things, the software modeling, the energy limits, the high performance windows and doors, uh, the heat recovery ventilator, and then the air sealing. And we have a structure that's extraordinarily efficient when you, when, you, when you take into account the synergy of all those things uh, together. So that's really Passive House. The efficiency is designed in without a lot of intervention, with very minimal um, sort of steering, if you will, by the owners. So this is the heart of our system. It's our lungs and also the way we get heat in the house. So this is the heat recovery ventilator uh, from Zender. The Comfort Air 350. This box here is a hydronic coil and in it is a pipe that comes from our hot water heater and it's running 120 degree water through this so that if the house is not warm enough there's additional heat supply to the air going to the different rooms through this hydronic coil. Another advantage of having this heat recovery ventilator is that the fresh air that comes into the house is filtered, right? So if I open this and remove this filter, you can see that it's slightly um, dusty right now. But when it's really dusty, you can actually stick this into a dishwasher and wash it out. Hot water, solar thermal system. It was one of the most painful areas of our journey. We actually stopped construction for two months. You know why? Because we thought that if we talked to enough smart people, that their ideas and their solutions would converge. In other words, coming to the same solution. But that wasn't the case with the solar thermal system. Everyone had their own opinion and everyone had their own way that they wanted to accomplish this. What do you do when all the experts are telling you different stuff? <laughs> um, we were left with having to make our own decision and it was scary. But in the end, we have to choose based on our own conviction, our own values and be okay with it. We're capturing rainwater and we have it stored in a 5,000 gallon tank. And we use it not for irrigation, but we use it to flush your toilets and do our cold water laundry. Because you know, you don't have to have super clean water to flush the toilets, right? The water quality in the tank is pretty darn good. The rain falls on the roof and it rolls down, collects at the gutter. And you'll see there's a downspout right in the middle of the deck. It goes through there, goes down the pipe, and it will now go all the way underneath the ground and it goes up the pipe on the left and it goes into the tank. It's all gravity fed. And we lasted the entire year on rainwater for flushing toilets and doing laundry. And that's quite significant for a drought stricken California. So the before number for the blower door was about 22 or 23 air changes per hour which means that on a winter day when the 20 mile hour wind is blowing outside 
every three minutes the entire content of the house the air volume of the house would go outside which is really crazy and we were looking to get to 0 0.6 air changes per hour which was an enormous feat that our contractor was tasked with on the day of the final blower door test we were chasing about 10 or 15 cfm about five six hours into the test couldn't find it the leak was in the duct oh no so we had to go into the attic there was a, like a cut in the hrv duct after he taped it up the numbers came back in so it was a really big deal for this 90 year old house to meet the air tightness requirement for passive house and all day we were chasing this elusive 10 to 15 cfm and at the end when we found that leak in the duct and patched it up and ran the numbers again oh my gosh we were jumping up and down that we met the passive house air tightness requirement Woohoo! About this window is that it combines some of the old and the new. So I want to show you that we actually did use 80% less energy after the passive house remodel. So remember, this is a 1922 bungalow and we have energy statements from before the remodel here. And we have the energy statements for a year, you know, after the remodel. This is um, the first year of living in this house and that's 80% less.